There's no doubt that 21st century man has come a long way from our hunter-gatherer origins. Good morning, it's Ryan here calling today to book the annual service on the boiler. In Britain today, we take food, shelter and warmth for granted. Can have a cappuccino, please? And most of us consume rather than create. I want to find out what happens if you strip man of all the luxuries and the conveniences of modern living and then force them to fight for their very existence. 13 ordinary British men are about to be abandoned on the remote, uninhabited Pacific Island. With just the clothes to stand up in and a few basic tools. Spear! Yeah, spear! Spear! Keep eyes on it, keep eyes on it. It's a boa constrictor. Oh, hello, scorpion. Ah. And these guys are going to be completely alone. Just seems like it's jungle forever. Filming everything themselves. Yeah. Can I pass the camera up to you? As they struggle for fire. Me first. Oh, it is this <laughs> thing. Water. Salt. No. Food. That was it. Yeah, I think he's dead. Dead man. I have no idea where the next meal's coming from. And shelter. Have British men lost the practical skills that were once passed down from father to son? Again! When pushed to the extreme, do they still have what it takes to survive? We're all losing weight, people are on the edge. I feel like I'm going to collapse, man. Tonight we feast like kings. 30 people will not leave this island. One wrong move and this place will take you down. If I can guarantee you anything, it will be life-changing for these people. <laughs> Can't believe it! This is dangerous, Fletch. Coming in, coming in, Grace! to say if I'm a survivor or not because I've never had to survive. It's a bit of the unknown, isn't it? I certainly don't underestimate what we're facing. I've never done anything like this in my life, have I? I'm about to abandon these men on a remote Pacific island to see if they can survive for a month. They will be utterly alone. My mother does pretty much everything for me. So I think going to the island is going to give me the opportunity to prove to myself that I can actually live, I can survive. These are ordinary guys with no previous experience of living in the wild. Oh, oh my! I think I have a massive point to prove. People might watch this and be like, oh, he's not going to survive, he's gay. So what? Watch, I'm the dark horse, I'm going to survive anything you throw at me. Here we go, boys. For the next four weeks, these men will have to survive entirely on their own wits. They have no food and only enough drinking water for the first day. OK, this is it. Yeah. We're heading in. Really, the idea behind this experiment is to find out whether modern man has lost that ability to look after themselves when they're stripped of everyday creature comfort. Without your smartphone, without your computer, can modern man still cut it? I still believe that that spirit is still there within us all. And it's not until we're kind of squeezed and put under pressure that we find that spirit, that resourcefulness, that courage again. So, OK, who was expecting a white sandy beach? Check it out, guys. What is it? It's a croc over there. Done. No way. Where is there it? Is. Where? Right over there. Where? 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 Just over there. Went under. Oh, see where the ripple is over there to the left. Okay, guys, this is end of the road. From here on in, you're totally on your own. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. It's going to be a really hard experience. Let's see what British modern man is really made of. Cheers. I suggest we get in a single file, because where are we going to go from here? Do we know the way? Exactly. So it's pointless all wandering off in different directions. The group has never met before, 
What's, what's your name? <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Come down. <laughs> they will be completely alone and have had just a day of survival training. Straight ahead, looks as if there's some land down through there. From here on in, everything you see will be filmed by the men themselves. Hey. Yeah, good to meet you. Hello, buddy. Get in single file, because if you wander off, you could drop down a gully. If you're in what, single what, file... What's your name? What's your name? My name is Tony. All right, Tony. If you get in single file, fellas, if one of you wanders off, one of you going to gully, I'll tell you. Single file. Okay. Oh, God. Wow, weird feeling suddenly just leaving them. Mainly because I know how harsh these sort of terrains can be. These islands always look amazing. If you get up close and dirty and you realise, you know what? Stinking mangrove swamp. Bloody hot. And full of one hell of a lot of nasties. It's time for me and the crew to leave. See you in four weeks. I won't be back until the end of the experiment. The men's home for the next month is a remote, uninhabited Pacific island. That's eight kilometers in circumference. I've ensured there's enough food and water here to keep them alive, but only if they have the ingenuity to find it, catch it, and kill it. The island has five beaches, but the interior is unforgiving. It's completely covered in thick jungle and mangrove swamp, which is exactly where I've dropped them off. Cheers. Do you want to take your hand? Do it. Ah, nice one. What's your name? Joe. Yeah. I'm Matt. Good Matt, to see nice to meet you, Matt. Good to see you. Three of the men are trained as cameramen, but they will be living under exactly the same conditions as everyone else. In their bags are just camera kit and medical supplies. Stick it in the medical pack. Beyond that, the men have no food, one day's water supply, and only a handful of tools. Mm. You've got three machetes. We've got two knives, one smaller knife. So we've got three knives. Three knives, three machetes. Yeah, that's it. Wow. Yeah, man. Fucking hell. <laughs> Fuck me. It's been an unexpected start. Uh, I've been fantasising for a, quite a long time now about a beautiful golden white sandy beach uh, and the boat crunching softly up on the sand. What's actually happened is that we've landed in the middle of an alien movie. Just have a look at the water. Look, see, I'm in. And it's coming up. This is coming in so quick. In this part of the Pacific, extreme tides mean these mangroves will soon be under three metres of water. Yeah, mate, this tide is coming in quick. Right, we've got we to need, get up there somehow. We need to get away from here, so it's not, it's not the ideal place. No, tide comes in where yeah. it's going to stop up there. If we, if we head, head up that way... Whoa, hang on a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, 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 wait. hang on a minute. Let's discuss it. Let's discuss it. All, all we want to do is just, just get out of here. That's yeah. what we're trying to do. Yeah. All right. You want to go up and then I'll... Yeah, we'll... we'll, we'll just... So we can get ourselves up all right here. All right, yeah, Watch your point. ankles, yeah, it's slippy. Come on, listen in, fellas. Yeah, yeah. Oh, listen in. You'll soon go over and you'll finish up with a bloody sprained ankle within an hour. It's four hours till sundown. The men now have two pressing priorities. Go on, I've got you. Get a foot on. Lovely. To look for a safe place to spend the night and then find a source of drinkable water before their supply runs out. You all right? Yeah. Yeah? Can I pass the camera up to you? Are you coming up? You ready? Yeah, I just don't want to slip. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Well done. What do you do for a living, Dean? Woo! I'm a hairdresser. I'm a hairdresser, and look what I'm doing now. Am I allowed to say that first 30 minutes was just fucking awful? Where are you Where am I from, from originally? Well, I'm from London. I was born there, but I grew up in Ghana and Zimbabwe. What about you, Ryan? Where are you from? I'm from Stockport, uh, near Manchester. Lived there all my life. Out of reach of the incoming tide, the men can catch their breath for the first time. What do you do? I trim people out to use computers. I'm an IT guy. Oh, yeah. Wow. I would never have got I've that. Never guessed that. I'll hey? Sam. No, I'm a neurologist. You're a neurologist. What's that? Brains. Like brains. Yeah? Yeah. What about you, Tony? What do you do? I was a police officer for 34 years. Wow. Wow. And I still do security work. Wow. 
So what's um, what does Ryan do? Yeah, right, and what do you do, mate? Um, I work in a call centre at the moment. Customer service. Yeah. Nothing glamorous, nothing special. Um, could you please just confirm to me the first line of the address and postcode? <laughs> I'm not where I'd like to be <laughs> at this point in time, feel, and I feel like the chances to achieve things are running low. I'd like to think that I could achieve something that's a bit tough. The only other thing that I've done that is remotely like this is going, going camping with my friends, but that's just been one night on the park, getting drunk, having a party. Other than that, nothing. Whoa! That was a close one. Almost had my kneecap then. Day one. Ah, uh, here we go. To be honest, this could be not a bad place if we had to, to camp. You know what, that's open. what I mean. This is not a bad place to start. The thing is, there could be scorpions all around this area. <laughs> Business coach Chris is convinced that in the remaining three hours of daylight, the group should find a beach to camp on, away from the jungle critters. It looks as if the island is almost like a U-shape mm. and we came into the lagoon. Yeah. For me, the best plan at the moment is to get back in the water the yeah. and walk yeah. along the mangrove slopes. No, Longer we stay in the middle. I strongly object to that. Why? Right, what, 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 right, what reason? for my reasons are this. We don't know what, how deep that water is. We don't know what the floor of the water is like. We've no idea how far we're going to be wandering through three foot of water. We well, don't know how high we're going to be up here again. Well, one at a time, we've got to, you know. If we had to, out of push, we could easily make camp here. It would be an all right place to stay if we had to. It's better than the mangrove swamp. There won't be any crocodiles up here. Yeah. We're away from mosquitoes a little bit. Whoa, guys! Hey. Oh, <laughs> shit, look. It's a boa constrictor. They're fucking quick and they're pretty vicious. Just shows we're not alone. Yeah. Great. <laughs> How exciting. I've just seen that. I, don't, I just can't see myself being able to sleep here. I just stay awake all night. For all we know is a field right there. From what you've seen of the island so far, how many fields have you seen? <laughs> <laughs> I think I don't want to sleep here either, but yeah. I don't think I can cope. Really? No way. I'm not sleeping tonight. I already know that. From here on in, you're totally on your own. 13 British men have been abandoned on a remote Pacific island <laughs> with nothing but the clothes on their back and a few basic tools. They now have less than a day's supply of water left. Oh, God. The men are utterly alone, filming everything themselves. Hey, hey. Yeah, good to meet you. I want to find out what happens when you take away all the comforts of 21st century life. Whoa! I think there's something primal and deep within us all that actually wants to know, can we still cut it? Sometimes it takes a little bit of squeezing, a little bit of pushing to find it in people. Guys, camp one. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Welcome to the jungle! <laughs> The men have chosen a clearing in the jungle to sleep in. But with the remaining daylight, they must find a source of drinking water, as their supply will be gone by tomorrow. One option is to keep thrashing up through this way, but the only the, what we've got to consider there is that we could thrash for an hour, yeah. get to the top of a hill or something, and there's bugger all there, we haven't found any water, we haven't found anything. So one plan would be some scouts go that way, so the base stays here. Just be careful, the, the plants here are alive and they will get you. While one group, headed by retired policeman Tony, stay behind to prepare the camp for the night. Don't forget, this is your bed tonight. The cleaner, the better. See you later. Hi, hey, um... Call centre worker Ryan and the others head off to scout for water. Ryan? Left or right? Right or left? This way, that way? This way. Let's go, then. The island is one square kilometre of mangrove swamps and thick jungle. The men have no idea where to head to find water. And currently, it's 30 degrees, with almost 70% humidity. I'm too hot and I want a drink. 
In this sort of heat, when you're working really hard, you can use up about a litre of water an hour. That's how unforgiving it is. And you can take your eye off the ball for a second, dehydration will get you. And the number one priority for them is finding water. Without it, they'll last probably about three days. Water. What you found, Zaki? Stagnant water. There's more over there. <laughs> we found water, boys. Salt. No, that is salt water. Fucking hell, cock. Bit scared that the island is just like this all the way. Really? Yeah. That's what it feels like at the moment to me. I hope not. I'm hoping there's some sort of open space where we can look at the, start, the sky. Yeah. Well, here we go again. Yeah. Fucking egg. Hungry. Yeah. Thirsty. Yeah. To be honest, guys, this almost looks like... This looks like animal oh, tracks, doesn't yeah. it? This is a definite trail, isn't it? Good trail. Mate! Hold it's on. the beach! It's the beach, guys. I can hear it right there. And you can see the water, the sun glinting off it. It's just beyond this prickly mass. Yeah! Palm trees! <laughs> oh, yeah! Oh, thank God. Yes! Yeah, baby! <laughs> Shazam! Oh, my God, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Pelicans. Wow, beautiful. It's <laughs> so beautiful <laughs> compared to that mangrove swamp. It's just perfect, isn't it? This is ridiculously wonderful. We can sleep tonight, yeah. knowing full well that we're going to come down here tomorrow for a dawn swim, and it's all going to be beautiful. Although I'm well tempted to just have a quick. Well, should we I'm, jump I in? Am, I am tempted. Do you want, should we let's, let's have a go. Come on. <laughs> Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, from a dank, sweaty forest full of snakes and spiders and scorpions. It's amazing how happy simple things like just finding this is. Life may not be so bad here. Sam's been stung on the face by a jellyfish. Oh, shit. They'll take the pain away. Go there, piss in your hand, rub it on your face. Ah. And then wash your face. Can you see anything? There's, yeah. There are no things. You can't pull them off anyway. I mean, try not to touch it. You can piss in your hand, you rub it on your face, your and it'll stop the pain. <laughs> just feel it right, it's like right on my top lip really? and across my nose. Okay, 33-year-old bachelor Sam Nightingale works in London as a neurologist. You know, I'm the kind of person that sets myself a lot of challenges, you know. Uh, um, I'm not kind of satisfied with where I'm at. I, you know, once I've achieved something, I kind of want to set the next goal. You know, Maybe that's something that makes me eternally a bit restless, but it's also something that makes me achieve lots of things, and it's kind of got me to where I am in life. <laughs> actually, that really, actually really stings. <laughs> Just do that. I'm not, I'm not pissing on my face. Let's go. Do it. Here. You sure you don't want to piss on your own I'll face? I'll piss on your face for you if you want. Will you? Uh, Kiff's preparing some now. <laughs> <laughs> right, you think we should start heading back to camp now? Before it gets dark. It's a shame we haven't got enough time tonight to move down here, but I think it'd be silly. The men have less than seven hours of drinking water left. They urgently need to find a fresh source. At the jungle camp, Dean and Tony have cleared a spot to sleep for the night. I'm, I was quite worried about doing this because like, I've only been out for a year. So. Did, being from... did you say you came out a year ago? Yeah. Oh, I, I, that was going to be one of the questions yeah, I was Yeah, yeah, I came don't... out a year ago. Lovely. Because I'm from a Roman Gypsy background, Yeah. it's like it's harder for me to come out because everyone there is married by the time they're 17. Yeah, yeah. How are you accepted by them now? Absolutely fine. Like, my dad, like my dad I, I was most scared about telling my dad. So it's like, it is so nice. It's so nice to just be able to be myself and, like, know who I am. That's awesome, mate. Yeah, I'm so chuffed for you. 
Sam, Rupert and Fletch continue to look for a drinking supply. Well, watch your hand, mate. Amps, oh, amps, amps. Ah, oh, bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what we got here, guys? What's that? Water? No! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> it's not the best colour. It isn't, but it'll boil up. We can filter it, mate. That's, um... Should we just make sure we see if it's fresh? Yeah, 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 yeah. How deep's that? It's about a foot deep. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot of water. That's... Oh, yeah. That would that'd... keep us going for a week yeah. or two. Yeah, that's fucking... That's a great find. So, rather than drinking it, we should... I might just have a little bath in it. Wash my balls off. I mean, it's, 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 it's our only water supply at the moment. Yeah. We should probably look after it a little more. Uh, yeah, we should have a balls out, balls out the drinking water. Rule, <laughs> yeah. rule, one, rule number two. I love that piece. <laughs> if they want to drink this water, they'll need to boil it first. And that means they'll need to light a fire. One of the problems of drinking stagnant water is that the animals also drink from it. They do more than that, though. They also shit in it. And where you get faeces, you're also going to get waterborne parasites and all manner of different infections. So without fire, really, for them, it's like a ticking clock, exposing them to dehydration. Ah, oh, my boys are home. Did you find anything? Yeah, we did, mate. What yeah? did you find? Yeah, some fresh water. You found you're fresh kidding. water? Yeah. <laughs> fuck for that. Yay, yeah, boys. Their supply of drinking water is dwindling fast. They need to get a fire lit, and quickly. Is that for the bow drill fire, Joe? Yeah, just a bit of string that we just found just as we came in near the swamp. It's just about long enough. 23-year-old sheep farmer Joe plans to create fire using a technique that dates back to the 4th century BC. He'll spin two pieces of wood against each other using a bow. But like all the men, he's only had a day's survival training. To you first. Okay. We'll do it ever so slowly. Ready. Oh, yeah, shitter. <laughs> Fucking thing. See so what? I'm starting to get my first hunger pangs. You're joking. I'm just very, very vaguely, just a little knocking in the distance. A little hunger pang. <laughs> She's only going to get bigger. That's... Come on, spin me. Ah. Ah. Fucking thing. Everyone else wet? So yeah. yeah, wet through. Yeah. I need to uh, explain something to everybody. Go on. Um, Half webbed so... feet. Hoofed feet. Worse. Worse. I'm just trying to think of a way to explain it. Explain myself. I've got a, I've got a tattoo that um, it looks really bad. It was a mistake getting it. It doesn't mean what it looks like. Everybody knows what it looks like. You don't even have to say it out loud. It means peace, love and unity. Uh, I was just interested in that sort of subject, but basically, basically... Swastika? Yeah. Oh, fuck it. That's but it. I'm so embarrassed of it now, no, I regret it. Fine. Come on, don't worry about it. You want to see it? Five, there it is. That's what it is. It was stupid, but, you know, I was young. It's just one of them things. Has anybody found any nuts anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> Not apart from you, mate. <laughs> Shit, it is this fucking string. <laughs> or even smoke yet. Looks like it might be a dark night tonight. At night, under the forest canopy, it's now completely dark. And the only way to film is using infrared lights. <laughs> Damn, ah, shit, yeah. drill. After three hours of failure, the push to get the fire lit has now become an urgent group effort. OK, let's start speeding her up a little bit. There we go. That's good. There we go. Oh, oh. shit house. <laughs> for me, the big concern is everyone's hydration. The potential for people to get really sick if they're, they're not drinking enough. And we're, we're so overexcited about being here. And, you know, it could so quickly get dangerously dehydrated. So I think the main priority now, now that we've found water, um, is getting the fire going and getting a system of getting water boiled and filtered and drinkable because uh, that's absolutely critical. Okay, let's stop there, Fletch, stop there, stop there. Well, I am in the pitch black. I am g genuinely so scared. Oh, Grandpa, he's gone to sleep. He's snoring. Is he? How do you manage that in this weather? I don't know. 
This is the last chance. If we don't get fire, we go to bed. We have failed at making a fire. I really thought, I just thought, I thought we'd be able to do it. And uh, I don't know, I, f I feel, feel pissed off, feel really pissed off. Hopefully nothing's gonna crawl on me in the night, but I'm gonna try and not think about it, try and get some shut eye. Have a day off, we are, fuck me. <laughs> Absolutely shattered, to be honest, yeah. The men only have a few hours of water left. If they can't light a fire in the morning, their time on the island will be over. What is that on my leg? I am cacking myself. Oh, fucking hell. It was, I've never slept on the floor like that before. It weren't nice. It really weren't nice. Dawn, the men's first morning on the island. No, that, that, that wasn't good. I, I got an hour towards the end, um, but, yeah, just, just couldn't sleep. It was just so uncomfortable. <laughs> so that isn't a very good pillow. <laughs> wasn't quite, didn't quite get it. I tried to turn it on his edge for a while, but it didn't really do it either. <laughs> I had a man sandwich. It was really nice. I was the Frankfurt and I had two rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, they found a stagnant pool of water. But without fire, they can't purify it. This is all we've got left for our drinkable water for today. The risk of dehydration is now critical. Let's have a bit of a meeting. But I mean, I think everyone agrees our priority is getting a fire because that leads to everything else water, yeah, yeah. food, you name it. So I think we just really just sort of break it down to real, real basics here. I think yeah. we've got to get stockpile water, we've got to filter it and we get a fire, if we can get that happening today, because yeah. if we don't sort those three things out, yeah. filtering, water and fire, then yeah. we're looking in, we're, we're being trouble, and today's going to go quick. Turn off the, uh, turn off the infrared, there we go. The men head to the beach to search for dry wood to make fire. Oh, oh, oh. On the way, Joe hunts everywhere for the perfect fire-making timber. It's just wet. It's too wet. It's too wet. Too wet, Dan. Yeah. Oh. At home in the Peak District, Joe works on his family's farm. I know it sounds a bit extreme, but I think I would um, I'd bring back national service. Because I think that young people should learn what our grandfathers used to do. And people learn a lot more about respect and things like that. There's a lot of respect missing uh, the, with some, some youth people of today. If we get fire, that's it. We can move on. We can food, purify water. So it all comes back to fire. So, uh, so yeah, there's a bit of pressure on today. This is going to be the first time some of the guys have seen the sky since yeah. you yeah. got here. Oh, man, this is, this is a drink. It's <laughs> <laughs> the world. Welcome to Paris. Oh, my God. Whoa. <laughs> this is something. Mate, this is the bollocks. Oh, look at this. It's just, like, loads of containers. This is just a council tip, basically. The amount of rubbish that, uh, that is washed up on this beach is it's horrendous, really. But I suppose for us, it's a blessing. Mate, that's a find. That is perfect. Now we need to find a hammock. Yeah. One thing that staggers me with these desert islands, however remote they are, is just the amount of trash you get washed up on the beaches. But for these guys, they really need to embrace the fact that one man's trash is another man's treasure. The men are on the island with only the bare minimum. This debris discarded by ships and washed up on the beach could be a lifeline for their survival. Can I just take the opportunity to introduce you to the fourth, 14th member <laughs> of us? He's our survivor. Give a big round of applause for Percy the Pig. Percy! Hey. 
After a night in the sweaty jungle, the beach is an ideal place to cool off. Yeah, look at that. That's the money shot. The money shot's right there. <laughs> Tony, the pride of Yorkshire. Thanks, Flex. The men may be enjoying the seawater, but the supply of drinking water has now finished. So I've just been for a wee, first one in a long time, and I saved a little bit for, to share with you. You lucky things. So, not a healthy looking colour, I'm sure you'll agree. I think we've got an injury here. IT trainer Mike Fletcher is in trouble. Come, on, come up to the camp. Yeah. OK. Really Look out if you've been poisoned or not. Yeah, I don't know either, mate. Up, I think the this area of the Pacific is notorious for deadly stonefish. Yeah. With skin-piercing spines, it's the most poisonous fish in the world. It's more than just a rock, do you think? <laughs> it shouldn't hurt that much, should it? OK. Ah, oh, bollocks. <laughs> it's, it really hurts, mate, more than it should. Ah, sit down, sit down. I don't know whether um, Fletch has stood on uh, like a fish. Oh, really? Or, oh, or whether um, it's a graze on a rock. <laughs> Leakage engineer Craig is also a part-time St John's ambulance man. I can't see anything inside there. That's just fresh blood coming out of there. So I don't I don't think you've I think it's just a rock. With a puncture wound, yeah. you normally just get one point. Yeah, but this is quite spread across. Cool. I think you might uh, live to tell the tale anyway. Oh, I'm guessing I'm not gonna die. That's let's, that's let's my prognosis. That, yeah. It's very tricky. It lulls you into a false sense of security, this beach. I think when you're in the jungle and um or well, the mangroves, you're sort of, you know, you know you've got to crack on, but you hit the beach, and of course we're so used to hitting, hitting beaches and just relaxing. But actually, if we don't get fire today, then people will start to ask the question, can we ever get it going, you know? Wow. Joe and Dan have found some driftwood, and the desperate quest for fire continues. Right, let's just start, and that's it, start it like that. Oh, yeah, this rock's good. Is it? Yeah. What compared to last night? Yeah. Okay, oh. Keep going, keep going. You're getting tinder? Got some in there. Through friction, they need to heat the tip of the wood to create a smouldering ember. What's Hold it. Put away slowly. No, there's no ember. No. Motherfucker. It's very hot. It's very hot, isn't it? So it's uh, out would of the you, sunshine now. Would you say it's now. stifling, Tony? Sorry? Would you say it's stifling? I've never known it like it. Uh, it the, the thing is this, yes, I've been as hot as this, yeah. but this is constantly hot. Yeah, it doesn't let up. It doesn't let up. Here we go. The drier, harder wood should give them a better chance of starting the fire. Start nice, that's it. Let's just get it going up and down, that's it, like that. In the midday sun, the temperature is now hitting 35 degrees. That's it. Ah, start. I've got stinking headache. Have you? Oh, God, I'm hot. <laughs> What's that? I said, God, I'm hot. Energy levels are flagging, are they? <laughs> I'm very hot. Are you finding your concentration a little bit wavers? Mind wanders a little bit. My, I think I, it, my concentration will be a bit more focused when I'm happy that there's an unlimited supply of water. Yeah. This temperature, we need water quickly. We've found the fresh water. We, we, it's, it's a stagnant pool. We need to, we need to boil it. It's a little bit desperate now.
They have been trying to get an ember for eight hours. Nice and long. Oh, oh no, no. Out of it. Just put it away. Oh, 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 oh. Right, we've got one. We've got one. We're in. We're in. Don't. OK, just stay there, though. Just stay there, Joe. Stay there. Okay. okay, right. Now let's get some of this together. Okay, guys. Okay, just drop her in. Drop her in sideways. Slowly, slowly. Really gentle. Just to get something. Just get the knife and just slowly drop her on. There we go. Yep, she's on. She's on. It just didn't take. I need to sit down, man. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling a bit right now. Yeah, it's I am, not going to lie, I am. I'm too hot and I want a drink. Yeah. The lack of water is having an unusual effect on Rupert. I think you're definitely dehydrated. I fucking seriously, my piss was a colour of um, Guinness. Yeah. It was not good. It was so, not good. And I've, I've just pissed out so much liquid just walking up there. So it's getting serious a little bit, so we need to... Um, it is, it is, and we need to sort of up the ante a little bit. This is 24 hours in. Right now, getting this fire going is just crucial. And if it doesn't happen today, then I think we're really going to start getting into trouble. I am concerned now. I am concerned. Um, I really think we need to pull our finger out. Finding the heat unbearable at the moment. It's the first proper midday we've been in on the island. We've experienced the heat without the water, without any water. Halfway through the men's second day on the island, and it's over 30 degrees in the shade. Come on, lads. On the yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Thanks. <laughs> For the past 12 hours, Joe, Dan and Fletch have been struggling to light a fire. This is it, boys. I can feel it. Big, long strikes yeah. to you. Big, long strikes. The drinking supply they arrive with has now gone. They urgently need to boil the stagnant water they've found to make it safe to drink. Mm. Fuck. Dehydration is taking its toll on 70-year-old Tony. My mouth is very dry now. My mum, Agnes, 91 years of age. I'm 6,000 miles away from you, mum. <laughs> Doing well, mate. And I'm missing you. Yeah. <laughs> It's just not taking. It, it all went there. That should have gone. Joe and Dan are trying to produce a smouldering ember using friction, but everything has to be just right. We realise now that the uh, drill has to be the same width all the way down. The stone's got to have the hole in exactly the right place. Yeah, the hole's got to be dead flat mm. and very, very close to the little V. So it's like each one of those things has stitched us up. A lot of ducks to get a line. Yeah, along yeah. the way. This is it. Like a long, big old long. If they fail to get a fire lit today, they will have no choice. They will have to leave the island. This kind of has to work, because this is, uh, without this, no water. OK, stop there. <laughs> Fingers crossed, everyone. Fingers crossed. OK, go on then, drop her on. Gently, like a butterfly. Yes! 
this. This is yeah! it. This is it, guys. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> That's the best Good moment of day party. two. Oh, my God. Wow, we got fire. Yeah! Oh, my God. How's it looking, Fletch? It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Oh, oh my god, look at him! Well done, Dan. Well done, mate. 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 That needed to happen today, and I've been getting headaches this afternoon just from dehydration. Mm. The team needed water. Well done, man. Well done, lads. Well done, boys. Well done, boys. Pool of life. I certainly had kind of visions before we came of at least some kind of running water and some little pool where you could we could wash clothes and ourselves in fresh water. As long as like no animal comes and dies in it, it should stay reasonably safe. Not quite heavy, Anne. This is the first go at boiling the dirty water. The fact that it forms a head isn't very reassuring. <laughs> no. Rupert and Sam are using the tins found washed up on the beach to boil and sterilise the water. That's it. So, done. That's kind of got to be at least a litre and a half in there, maybe two. Yeah, it's only like 39 tins we have to boil in one day. <sighs> Seriously? 39 tins a day? It's a lot of tins every day. Ah, oh, she's up. Rolling boil. Look at that. We've got a rolling boil? Yeah, there's a like, lovely pot of hot water with scum all over the top of it, and we can drink it. It's brilliant. It smells like, like a fire, a metal fire. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, then. That's probably a bit rusted there, but... Mate, get it down. Dude, mate, you look oh, the part man. with the charcoal in your face. Yeah, yeah, a bit good, like tin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you know what? Yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. fine. It does the, it does the yeah. job, right? Gentlemen, we have water. What do you reckon, Siri? It's not bad. It's all right. It's, no, it's, it's just, that's I mean, not bad at all. It's, it's like, kind of like the weakest cup of tea you've ever had in your life. <laughs> Tony, brought you a brew. It's a desert island version of Yorkshire tea. Please enjoy. Smells good. Looks good. You're good health, gentlemen. <laughs> Happy? It's bloody delicious. This is some of the finished product. Looks like piss. Tastes a lot worse. Mind keeps wandering. I keep on thinking about uh, bottles of ice cold water or can of can of cola, ice cold straight out of the fridge. Oh. And all I got to drink is this bloody warm, worse than piss water. It may not taste great, but the men now have a reliable source of water. Their next problem is where their first meal comes from. I'm properly hungry. Oh, yeah. I've got a knot right there. <laughs> I just want something to eat. I'm starving. We've been talking about water all morning, and in 10 minutes, the, com the, the conversation's just switched. When you're deprived of food, it literally becomes all consuming, it's all you think about, it's all that motivates and drives you. I need something. These guys have got 13 mouths to feed, they've got to be resourceful. Oh, hello. What is it? Ooh. Scorpion. In the fire, that's silly. There he is. There, there he is. There he is. There he is. Got him, got him. I've got him. He's got small claws, guys. He's one of the bad ones. He's aggressive. He's aggressive. Oh, Jesus. Don't, don't kill it if you're not going to eat it. Yeah. Of course I'm going to eat it. Mate, I'm starving. Right, okay. There's a stinger off. Okay. Let's kill him because I feel bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, God, I can see its guts yeah. inside. That's not going to be tasty, guys. Come on, man, you're making us wait. Come on. We want to see you eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Okay, guys. Come on. Good. No, just don't. Just down in one. Blow it and then just get rid of the legs. Just protein in the legs. You said you were hungry. Yeah. Yes. That's man food. Perfect. Man food. Yeah. How hard does that taste? Oh, it's food. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm proud of you, Sam. That was, that was, that was amazing. <laughs> the other thing that hunger does is it saps your morale. You know, it's easy to be positive and upbeat and enthusiastic and energetic when you've got lots of energy. But when you're experiencing failures, it becomes a kind of spiraling downward circle of lack of food, lack of morale, lack of energy. We're finding little bits, but what we could do with it is a good, hearty meal. We need something of some substance. I think I'm hallucinating. I'm so hungry. Uh, really? We're 13 strapping blokes. So we're we're going to need a feed. And um, at the moment, wondering where that's going to come from. Next time on the island... I've never been so hungry in my whole life. The fight for food begins. We're all losing weight, people are on the edge. The fucking pelicans seem to be eating more than I do. Chuck it, chuck it! Ah! Fuck! Busters! Holy shit, the bed, man. That's a big one. Come on, fucking nature, give us some food. Just pass me a coconut yeah. shit. Get, get him! Ah, I got him right between his eyes, but it broke the spear. I have no idea where the next meal's coming from. If I'd have known... This is absolutely fucking nuts. <laughs> that it was going to be like this. You've got him. You've yes. got him, mate. I'm not too sure I'd have applied to come. Make no illusion, folks. This isn't a set put up by Channel 4. This is bloody real. Four weeks ago, I set out to prove 13 men could survive being abandoned ah. on a remote Pacific island. The pelicans seem to be eating more than I do. This, for me, is a simple experiment to study what makes a man a man. Left alone on the island, okay. And uh, there you are. They filmed everything themselves. I wanted this to be totally new, totally original, and never done before. 28 days after dropping them off, I returned to the island to find out how my groundbreaking experiment actually worked. Yeah. That's all you've been drinking. It tastes like you've all been washing your socks. <laughs> and see for myself some of the techniques the men used to survive. When you're pushed to extremes, you realise you can go a lot further than you thought. The men reveal how the experiment affected them. The more things I get rid of in my life, the bigger the smile gets. I think it's powerful to see a group where people are so different, but they're actually bound together by shared experience. And you'll see what happened <laughs> when they got back to civilization. I'm so happy. <laughs> I just want to see you. Yeah. I missed you. By Christ, I have. <laughs> this island might look like paradise, but if you have a route here with nothing, trust me, it will be hell on earth. I chose to base my experiment on a remote desert island in the Pacific Ocean, more than 5,000 miles from Britain. I think there's something appealing about doing this on an island for a couple of reasons. First of all, there's nowhere to run. You're stuck on this limited space, and that forces issues. The other reason is that I think people often think of desert islands as nice places. The reality is they're deserted for a reason. There's very little running water, and these things are covered in, in snakes, 
and tarantulas and scorpions, you've got crocodiles, uh, you've got sharks, and it, it forces issues because it's an unforgiving, unrelenting environment. But despite the dangers, the men survived. Well, I can see their fire. There he is, boys. Oh, Come on. <laughs> One month after dropping them off, I went back to see for myself what the men had achieved. Wow, well, look at you guys. <laughs> Hairier. Oh, yeah. yeah. Skinnier. Bit. Yeah. <laughs> but hopefully smarter. Wow, well, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. You. Will you show me your camp? Come in. Good. Come in. Come in. So this is what we call home. And do you often have Tony? That is Tony's spot. <laughs> Good to see you, Bear. Congratulations. Well done, you. Thank you very well much. Well done, you. I love it. I love your throne. So I clocked them all in, I clocked them all out. Safety, security, and I'd like to be the last on the boat to make sure they're all on. <laughs> <laughs> Shoe stores, obviously. A uh, table kindly made for us by Joe. Hanging machetes, torches, buckets, coconuts. It's good. I mean, this is a real semblance of community. I love that. Look at that. Yeah. You've got a front door. Camp Bassey. Yeah. <laughs> Shirley Island, Camp Bassey. <laughs> so why, why Shirley Island? Uh, because every time we went out looking for food, it was like, surely we're going to find something today. Surely we're going to find something tomorrow. And surely enough, we did. Shirley Island. Genius. In any survival situation, one of the first things you have to do is find shelter. In my opinion, the spot the men chose to set up their camp was pretty good. It was close to the sea, which is a great source of food, and not too far from their water source. But for me, if they'd moved just 10 metres further into the trees, they'd have had better protection from the elements. Custom-made windbreak. <laughs> and when was the wind bad? At night? Night time. It got quite cold, so we built the windbreak to try and ease our suffering. Dean and Ryan, show us where we used to sleep. So some people sleep around here, and then others, like me, Saki, sleep here and get attacked by crabs and frogs every night, which wasn't fun. But it's, it, it's home. If you choose the right place to sleep, you can avoid a whole host of issues. Oh, shit, look at your face. Is it bad? Oh, yeah, it looks pretty bad. From the very beginning of their time on the island, the men were ravaged by insects at night. Anything that's bit me is an arsehole. <laughs> and if you're covered in itchy, painful bites, you're not going to get the rest that you need. What about eight days? Working out what you can do to get a decent night's sleep isn't just a luxury, it's actually about survival. The little things in survival become the big things, and a good night's sleep is right at the top of that list. Wow, look at that, it really goes on. After a few miserable nights, some of the guys realised their mistake. This is the executive lounge. And four of them did move further into the jungle. It's Matt and I were the first to kind of build a couple of these A-frame beds. This is my one here. Um, they're really comfy. Yeah, they're great. They're Try it out comfy. if you want. Uh, it there takes me, so it should manage you. Oh, wow, yeah. I would have thought that's an awful lot comfier than lying on the oh, ground, God, yeah. you know? Been home for 28 nights and actually gets pretty comfy and you can look at the stars in the canopy. The A-frame beds some of the men built yep. were the perfect way to raise them off the cold, damp floor and out of reach of the critters. Dean's finally found a use for his hairdressing skills. He's <laughs> weaving all the leaves that are sticking through underneath back in beautifully. That is an ant's nest. I've made my bed with an ant's nest. <laughs> Foolish, wasn't it? The men made mattresses using vines, which they covered with woven palm leaves. We're on our way to greater things. That's a shitload better than sleeping on the floor, isn't it? This became known as my fortress of solitude. Oh, my goodness, um, wow. Uh, it's not very dignified. So you really well cocooned in there? I'm pretty well waterproof if the weather had changed. Yeah. Yeah. Warm, dry, off the ground from all the creepy crawlies. Yep. And very happy. Smart thing to have done. I think it's, it's amazing to see how it's evolved and changed. And initially, their camp looked a bit like a hobo encampment. 
Uh, but as the weeks have gone on, they've realised that you really need a sanctuary. You need somewhere you can hide away and, and it makes you feel good. And as a reminder of what you love about home. I love the table. Test it so, out. Yeah, I love to test it out. Uh, it's been used pretty much every, every, every so minute. So would you eat meals around here? Yeah. You'd yeah, actually do. do that? Yeah. I mean, if you think of how many British families have stopped sitting around a table and eating together. And there's something incredibly powerful about actually sitting down and looking each other in the eye yeah. and sharing a meal together. So I love the fact that you made table a priority. Looking around the camp, it was obvious how resourceful the men had been with materials they scavenged from around the island. Yeah, grab a seat, Bear. Grab a seat. I mean, this is great, isn't it? One thing that staggers me with these desert islands, however remote they are, is just the amount of trash you get washed up on the beaches. Guys, that looks like the beginning of a toilet. You would need an enormous arse to, <laughs> to justify a hole like that. You certainly would. Craig, I'm going to be honest with you, mate. This is my ultimate nightmare. It's the closest I've got to a stress ball, to be honest with you. What I've got here is uh, crab pot night 2.0. This is a sack he's find. What is it? An open beer. You're joking. No, no. Oh. I shit you not. There's so much stuff on the shores of this island of kind of crap and rubbish that normally you kind of look at and touch and go, oh, what a shame, it's ruining paradise. But now we look at every single piece of plastic and metal and string and turn it as kind of treasure. When was the last time you felt salon fresh? What? No way. Shut the fuck up. That is shampoo. <laughs> Dean, promise you show it to me. That is shampoo. Right, you get to Advanced warning. I've just given Tony a plastic truncheon, so look out. Oh, <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> to keep the boys on the toes, I've got an enforcer. It's always embarrassing to be a human. The shit that we are jettisoning into the sea that is being washed up on shore is phenomenal. Taft manages to find a place. Let's have a look at them bad boys. One black one, one blue one. They're not the same colour, but they're the same make. They're the same make. <laughs> what more can you ask for you on, on the deserted else. island? Mate, they're not as good as mine. Look at them. That, they don't fit well, but fuck it, it's going to be doing me well on a Sunday night. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to say, the pair of high heel shoes for you to get lucky. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> After last night, Fletch. <laughs> <laughs> right, should we do this fishing line then? Yeah, let's go get some let's fish. Let's crack on. on. Four weeks after abandoning 13 British men on a remote desert island. I mean, that's almost like a honeymoon suite of a view. I went back to see for myself how they managed to survive. Welcome to Camp Bassi, sir. Wow, do you mind if I have some of this? On a tropical desert island like this, dehydration is your biggest enemy. God, that's good. Without fluids, you're not going to last for more than three days. Yeah. That's what we've been drinking. Good, healthy stuff. Filtered, boiled, Nothing ready to back. drink. <laughs> I mean, truly <laughs> horrible, isn't it? <laughs> it tastes like you've all been washing your socks in it. If the filter actually does, it is actually my socks. Mm, thanks. So you are drinking my sweat particles. Well, Enjoy that. <laughs> the only water source the men could find after a desperate search of the island was a stagnant pool. I never realised that I'd have to drink puddle water. When it came to collecting and transporting it, the debris from the beach came into its own. Calling it water is now a bit of a stretch of the imagination, to be honest. Sorry. And one of the problems of drinking from stagnant water is that the animals also drink from it. They do more than that, though. They also shit in it, and it's that that will make people sick. To make the water safe, the men improvised an ingenious filter system using materials they scavenged and repurposed. Stuff with, like Fletch said, his socks, charcoal, <laughs> A little a grid to stop anything getting through, although towards the end we did have a very protein-filled water supply. Uh, insects yeah. and bugs and larvae and all of that. Yeah. <laughs> this was smart survival. Filtering the water before boiling removes any big particles that could contain life-threatening bugs. Looks like piss. Tastes a lot worse. Having established a water supply, the men's next priority was food. 
Is this where you keep your nets? Yeah, these are them here, so they're floating there. We're at low tide, so it should, take, it should be pretty quick. Finding these nets, repairing them, and getting them into the sea was a lifeline for the men. When it comes to desert island survival, I always say to people, fish first. The sea as a larder is well stocked. All of the seas around here are literally teeming with life. There's something like 500 different edible species of fish, but it's also booby-trapped. Every time the men swam out to check their nets, they had to run the gauntlet with jellyfish, venomous stingrays, and a whole host of other nasties. The waters were infested with sharks. We were seeing these great big fish, you know, with half of them eaten by the sharks, and we just didn't think anything of it. We just went out and swam with them. You never know what you're going to get. Look wow. at that. Yeah, good luck getting that one now. Even on my brief visit to the island, the men hauled in a potentially lethal catch. Stonefish are actually one of the most deadly fish in the sea. Well camouflaged, easy to stand on if you're not aware. Even if it doesn't kill you, people have been known to literally beg to have their feet amputated. The pain has been so intense. The island looked beautiful, but every time you went anywhere, it tried to kill you. And you're suddenly thinking, Jesus, this ain't a postcard. It's horrible. Before taking the guys into this extreme environment to start the experiment... If I leave him be, he will just quietly crawl around me. I gave them just one day's basic survival training. If they're big enough and you're small enough and one of these gets hold of you, going to squeeze you. I can feel that already on my hand. Crush every bone in your body. So the truth is, none of these guys are experts. None of them are survival kind of gurus. You know, they're regular people, and that's what we wanted. We didn't want the experts. We wanted normal people who have got to kind of improvise and think smart and be resourceful. Do you actually ever wipe your bum with leaves? I love wiping my bum with leaves. <laughs> Personally, if it was me, I'd get up in the morning, raise my arms aloft, wander into the sea, do my business, wipe my backside, salute as it floats out into the Grand Pacific. <laughs> you know, clean, done, hygienic. You wash your hands and you haven't got crap all over the island. So a bear doesn't shit in the woods, then? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I knew the biggest challenge for these guys was going to be finding enough food to keep them going. OK, scorpion. You'll find these under wood piles. You're out collecting firewood. Lift one up and bam. And it's not always obvious where those calories are going to come from. He'll strike you with his tail. See him doing it there? And he comes round, he bites you. Be a man, pin him down, take his stinger off. Good thing about these, though, they're good protein and you can eat them. Tastes like shit. <laughs> You're better off skewing them and roasting them over the fire. But raw, they're horrible. Oh, hoo -hoo. scorpion! There he is. There, 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 there he is. Out. Got him. Got him. I've got him. Aggressive. He's aggressive. From experience, I know it's amazing what you'll eat when you're pushed to the oh, edge. God, I can see its guts inside. That's not going to be tasty, guys. Oh man, you're making us wait. Come on, we want to see you eat it. I hear that in, a, in the future, when things get a bit more dystopian, we're going to have to eat insects rather than mammals. So, I'm looking forward to it. Ah, yes. Ah. That's man food! Oh, man food! Yeah! yeah. Oh, thanks! That was... how, how does that taste? Oh, yeah. it's food! <laughs> oh. One of the key skills in the wild is knowing what you can eat and what you can't eat. And if there's doubt, don't take the risk. You'll only get it wrong once. More dangerous than any snake, scorpion or crocodile is this fella. Innocent looking. Little apple, actually called the death apple. And this is enough to kill not one man, but 20. And when you're surviving on an island, you're hungry, you see what you think is edible fruit, so tempting to pick it up, eat it. End game. Death apple, bloody death apple. That thing, I was paranoid about death apple. But is that a death apple? Yeah. Yeah. Where does that come from? It's been washing up. Yeah. Washed it's up? Not here. Maybe down there or up there. When you're walking on the beach, they wash up from elsewhere. If you step on that death apple, you're getting scabbed, you could die. And trust me, that death apple looked lovely. 
So we could have ate that and we would have died. From start to finish, the men were always teetering on the brink of starvation. And there goes my fucking bait. Just this bay is empty of life. All right. Come on, Mother Nature, give us some food. But what's important is that they never gave up. So where are we going, Sam? We're going foraging. And that is a key to survival. Look at the pigs. Ah, balls. Fuck. We all tried so many different things, and they just didn't work. We didn't realize how far mankind has come through trial and error. OK, here we go. He's coming shallow. Failure plus failure. <laughs> Plus determination equals success. Yes! Yes! Fuck it out! Yes! Hey, look at that, big game. Oh, mate! We've caught 28 fish yeah. today. Anyone for carbohydrate? Wow! Oh, oh my God! Driven by all-consuming hunger, <laughs> they went to extraordinary lengths to discover what the island had to offer. It's a fucking caiman! <laughs> Wow. I've never ate an orange before. Fuck off. We'll start now. Try that. Come on, here's your first one. Wow, you've got a massive hit of citrus all the way over here. It's nice, isn't it? So good. Welcome to the world of fruit, Dean. There was, however, one craving they couldn't easily satisfy, despite a tantalising reminder. Dean, what have, you, what have you found on the beach, mate? We found a, a sweet wrapper. It's intense for these guys, the lust just to get something sweet in their mouth. And the boys have found some of these and they had like a tiny little bit of sugar in them. But if you put a bit of boiling water in them... Are you good? Oh, oh, oh it's good! It it's good! Oh. I don't care if he gives me the shit. <laughs> it's worth it. Over four weeks, these 13 men had come a long way since her first unappetising meal of snails. Oh, Mr Fletcher, an artist, sir. Uh, he toasted some coconut there as well. Toasted coconut here, mate. Before departing, they invited me to sample some of their favourite hard-earned island delicacies. Unbelievable, guys. We have dressed crab, honey. Oh, you do not know how honoured you are to have that honey. Onto wow. your oysters there, which you're just marinating at the moment in a, in a lime jus. We have fresh snapper there. We have gazuma berries and almonds in there, toasted coconut and a fig and lime marinade to go with your fish. Yep. Well, guys, I would like to, um, I'd like to say grace before yep. eating. Yeah. Lord, um, thank you for these men, the courage and the fortitude they've shown. Thank you for the hands that prepared this food and thank you for the sea that's provided it. Amen. 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 And let's try a bit of this. So, a little bit of honey on honey onto the oysters. A little I'd bit say. of honey on the oyster. That stuff is insane, I'm going to tell you now. You look at the food that they serve for me, and there was a real sense of genuine pride in that, that it was, um, it was really special. To go from, you know, scavenge, scavenging around in the first few days to providing something that, you know, I'm not saying it would it would be served at a Michelin star restaurant, but it was pretty good given the tools that we had. It showed our evolution and how much we'd got our stuff together. Oh, it's incredible. <laughs> it's off the scale. On that platter, that was like the culmination of our surviving there. It was a real sense of achievement. A toast to you guys, <laughs> to an experience I, I, I really pray you'll never forget, uh, to an experience that I hope will empower you in your everyday lives and to friendships that I hope will last uh, all your days as well. Here, here. It's you guys. Here, here. Cheers. Four weeks ago, I abandoned 13 British men on a remote desert island they would have to fend for themselves in isolation. For me, it was really important that we didn't have camera crew coming in every day and filming it all, and it kind of just would have felt set up. I wanted this to be totally new, totally original, and never done before. For this reason, the radical decision was made to get the 13 men to film the entire experience for themselves. Come on, everybody. 
Take a walk with Uncle Zaki today. The only filming is these guys going like that and going like that. Right, guys, I'm gonna have to put you down. I think I found us a bird. Yes, I have. Hang, hang on, hang on. And effectively, that means the only people telling their story is themselves. Woohoo! Shazam! We're all photographers now. We've all got iPhones or smartphones yeah. or whatever. And you can shoot movies on these things, yeah. you can take pictures, and, and we just do it as a natural part of our yeah. life. So why not incorporate it into television? Yeah. I'd like to show you around my favourite spot. This is where I come and sit when I feel a little bit shit. I tried to do this trip on a budget. I won this hat in Bulgaria about five years ago. Here's the sea. And these are my rocks. These are my rocks. Wang Rock. Way I'm out there. I bought my boots cheap, cheapest boots I could find. Look at this, day 13. What the fuck am I gonna do? Look at the view. Look at all this. This is the jungle that on which I have become a man. The group included a sound man and three trained and experienced cameramen who lived under exactly the same conditions as everybody else. It's a bit like myself, Matt and Rupert and Kiff were uh, on a plane and it's crashed on a desert island, which just happens we had our gear with us. With danger never far away, the men needed to be able to deal with emergencies themselves. The hospital, where people went for treatment. Okay, so were you in charge? You were well, the assigned table. medic. Uh, yeah, between myself and Sam, um, we dealt with a few injuries. Like, yeah, yeah. The men were provided with basic medical supplies. Craig was a trained oh, first aider. Yeah, I think I've done more first aid on the island than I do when I'm back home. <laughs> And Sam, a qualified doctor. You say, ah? Ah! He slipped as a frivet. I think it broke my hand. Without them, some men may have been forced to leave the island. I'll be honest, I punched the sand. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed being the doctor on the island. Uh, it gave me a bit of, bit of a sense of purpose. So I've made this bamboo into a, hopefully, roughly the shape of a splint. I was called upon to do things I wouldn't normally do in my day-to-day -day life as a neurologist. I can still do some things. Yeah. yeah. But the truth is that ultimately survival is about so much more than just physical preservation. As human beings, we're pretty complex creatures. You know, we need much more than just food and water. Uh, I think that's our base level, but above that, then we crave things like friendship and connection and community. The single hardest thing about that 28 days on that island, the lack of contact with your loved ones from the outside world. I'm 6,000 miles away from you, home, <laughs> and I'm missing here. The men had to get by with just one photo from home. My two grandkids, you're still with me, Toby and Annabelle. You'll be with me all the time. My beautiful girlfriend. And, uh a huge part of me wants to go home. I think the hardest thing was definitely missing my, my girlfriend and our little girl that we have together. That was heart-wrenching at times. It's just, it's just a whole no contact whatsoever. I mean, and it, yeah. you keep, I keep thinking I'll just snip off and use the phone and call home. Very, very suffocating feeling. It was important that the group reached out to each other to keep isolation at bay. What glues people together? Humour, kindness, and that shared adversity you're going through together. Yeah, I do. Oh, just there. Uh, I'm having a bit of motion weight, to be honest. Yeah? Yeah. You know what you need, don't you? Big Fletch hug. <laughs> yeah. You've got a temporary family at the moment, mate. Yeah, I know. Yeah? I know. I know. You've never met these people before in your life, but yet you become instantly close, just like that. As soon as you're chucked on the island, you're, you're best friends, because you've got no choice. I just feel like I've been so up and down. <sighs> you know what you need then, don't you? As well as a Fletch hug. What's that? You just man the fuck up, don't you? No, I do. If <laughs> <laughs> I'm gay, I'm allowed to cry. <laughs> but there were inevitable tensions and moments when it looked like the group might fall apart. 
Mate, come on, why are you here? Why are you here? I don't know why I asked my question that. I know. It sounds like we're a lot to go, so I know. It's chucked off. Right? At a wild expose, there's people wide open. And um, sometimes there's a lot of fallout and mess first. So all you want to do is bitch, and that's all. I'm not bitching. Hey, grow up, don't walk away. When people are under pressure and your life is on the line, you've got to do all you can to keep a group cohesive and together. Because when it's together, it's strong. It's not strong when it's fragmented and broken. So what's going through your mind, Craig? Oh, I'm off. I'm off. I've had enough. Don't quit, mate. You'll regret it for the rest of your life if you do. Just keep plodding. Just digging deep. Yeah? You need to find, you need to find that fire in your belly, mate. In the end, all 13 men managed to stick it out together. Let the party begin! And on their last night, were able to celebrate their differences. The award for the best tantrum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one's close. This one's close one. Oh, it's tight. It's tight. It's a tight one. Is Craig. <laughs> so the category for the most improved person, and this goes to Ryan. Yay! Yay! Well done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> I'm going to take this award and apply it for the rest of my life. Well done, man. Well done, man. Well done, man. Well done, man. I think it's powerful to see a group where people are so different, but they're actually bound together by shared experience. I think what you guys have been through is essentially an accelerated crash course in life. <laughs> And I'd love to find out what each of you is going to take away from the island, but also what you're going to leave on the island. You realise how little you can survive on here and how little you actually need, and it's, it's great to... But I think hopefully I'm going to be able to go home and just like, pull that back and just be slightly less kind of wasteful with everything I do. I'm going to leave behind, hopefully forever, that sense of taking things for granted in the world that we live in. I don't... Feels I had a massive ego before, but if I did have any, I think I'll leave a bit more of it here. I kind of started this whole experiment really to try and find out what everyday modern British blokes are actually like under pressure. And the reality is the experience has been bloody hard. I have huge respect for anyone who can come out of it the other end together as friends and with a smile on their face. <laughs> Mate, amazing! I just want to eat some food! And after any mission, there's nothing quite like the rewards. I've been thinking about that bar for days now, mate, and that is what I'm going to do now. When we first got back to civilization, we were given rules about what we should and shouldn't eat. So we were told to stay away from carbs, beer, and all of these things. And the first thing we managed to get our hands on... One, two, three! <laughs> Beer. Holy God! Man, do I like beer now? It was quite an achievement. I think we were all proud to have done it, and that cold beer. Hug it out. Hug it out. That was. That showed we had somehow. After weeks of being cut off from home. First contact can be overwhelming. Hello. Hiya, Mum. Hello. Hiya, Joe. Hello. It's hard to explain what we've just done in a phone call. Well, where do you begin? We just got off, Mum. We've just uh, just landed. Baby. Hello. Are you there? <laughs> <laughs> Four weeks worth of no contact. Four weeks worth of missing. All just. Came out. Dad. Hi, I'm done here. I'm here. I'm finished. I'm back uh, from the island, love. I just want to speak to you. I lost two stone. Two stone? Yeah. I just want to see you. Yeah. Good. 
feeling these things makes you feel really fucking alive. There's no doubt, I think, when you go through hard times, there's pain first. But this is about what people find at the end of it. Yes! Energy is coming back! Returning from the wild always helps you see modern life through fresh eyes. That's the women's correct. What do the symbols mean? <laughs> <sighs> Freedom. It's fucking incredible. Simplest things like taking a loo in a toilet as opposed to running to find a tree that's far enough away from camp. Oh, my God. Problem solved. Feel the cool air. It doesn't feel right. Oh wow! There's nothing left of me. God, that's very weird. <laughs> Nobody had to fetch it. I'll filter it. I'll boil it. Oh, man. Oh. You, you do take it for granted. I'm not going to take it for granted anymore. And the magic is you can't buy those things. It comes at a cost, and the cost is that 1,000 barrels of sweat and toil. And I've been there many times. The hardship is always worth it. And no food ever tastes as good as that first meal. Oh, my God! Calm down, Sam. Calm down, mate. Chicken! This is sugar. This is, this is sugar. Your senses are almost like... They, they, they almost shut down. They're not being exercised. So the second that you have something which you haven't had for a month, you times its flavour by a 1,000. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. More sugar. More sugar. <laughs> More sugar. <laughs> sugar. <laughs> it tastes so fucking good. The best food. I take immense pleasure when someone says that they're hungry or they're starving now in normal life, saying that you don't even know what hunger is, because it is very different to your standard space between dinner and tea. Three, two, one. And the tomato sauce absolutely blew your mind. It was that strong. Oh, it's just like a pure oh, explosion of flavours in your mouth. It, it tastes what magical. To food. Our old friend. She's back again. For 13 men, a life-changing experience. And one which they deserve to remember with an enduring sense of pride. Whoever you are, whatever shape you are, whatever upbringing you have, actually, when squeezed, these guys have proved modern British man has actually got what it takes. <laughs>